Okay. Um, yeah, thank you um, for the introduction and uh, welcome to my talk. So I will talk about ATM Grid uh, and this joint work with the supervisor Stephanie and Ben. So let's start with a short motivation. So when we're looking at multi good in time, the general idea is, uh, of course, on the final levels, we perform a time integration in parallel to time sub intervals. And then on this uh, courses level, we uh, go over the whole time domain, but considering a time grid with only a few points. Uh, and here I distinguish between two level and multi level. And in the two level case, as for example, per real, the idea in general is to use as many points here on the course grid as we have processes, since in such a way we can parallelize the final level perfectly. The problem is that with an increasing number of processes, at some point, this part dominates and we have limited parallelism, but which could be nice for some applications that we not <clears throat> get too small uh, time steps on this course level. In the opposite, we have the multi-level uh, algorithm as, for example, MGrid, and here we're using this multi-level structure and as a benefit, we're able to achieve a uh, course is grid, which has only a few points really, or three, five, or whatever. But um, this is, <coughs> sorry, this is nice for the scalability, but uh, this could be a problem for some applications since this large time steps are not applicable for any kind of application. And what we want to find is a method or a variation of the known method that uh, reduces the amount of solves on the courses level, but still allows for not too large time steps. And of course, um, the perfect uh, would be if we could do something in parallel uh, in time here on the courses level. So in general, the problem that we want to solve is an initial value problem of the following form. And we discretize it uh, using one step method such that we get this time integrator phi here, which takes a solution at a point i minus one and propagates it to the solution at point i, such that we can go step by step over time. We can rewrite this in a matrix form and we get this nice structured matrix here, which can be solved by a block forward solve. But the problem is um, that this block forward solve is completely sequential in time. And of course, what we want to use here uh, is parallel time. So let me introduce the new ATM grid algorithm. The first thing that we do um, is we partition our time points into C and F points, whereby every M point is a C point and all others are F points. Um, then we define two types of relaxation schemes, which are the F relaxation, which takes a solution at a C point and propagates it to all following F points, and the C relaxation, which takes a solution uh, at the C point in front of uh, at the F point in front of the C point and propagates it to the C point. So until here, there's nothing new. These are also components of the uh, classical M grid. But now. On the courses level, we use instead of one global grid, which considers the whole time interval, we consider truncated local course grids. And here's an example for the two level case. And as one can see, instead of one large uh, on the course level, which is this all here, um, instead of one grid, which takes the whole time interval, we have multiple grids which only covers time sub intervals. And all of the scripts are independent, so they can be solved in parallel. And the idea is to have one grid per point on the causes level. In this case, we have six C points, so six local truncated um, cost grid. And all of them are based on some distance K. And then th this distance K defines the number of time points on each local cost grid. So in this case, we have K equals three. Then the restriction is just an injection, and um, for the interpolation, we choose an injection of one point plus an F relaxation. And uh, this becomes more clear when we're looking at the two level ATM grid algorithm here. And the general idea is on the fine level, we do the same as classical M grid or parallel, we do an F relaxation. Afterwards, we compute the residuals at the C points and we inject the residuals to the uh, cost grid. But now we have multiple cost grids, local cost grids. So we have to distribute here the uh, residuals to multiple grids. But then each of these grids can be solved uh, 
independent from each other, so in parallel, and no further communication is needed. Since afterwards, after each grid is solved, each grid updates exactly one point, and we perform an F relaxation afterwards. So um, we can use the FIS formulation for solving nonlinear as well as linear problems, and which is important that it is completely equivalent to pair real if we choose an F relaxation and choose k equals the number of c points, which means that all of this local cost grids here goes back to the initial condition. And of course, then we have um, yeah, then we have parallel. We can uh, go further to a multi-level setting. And I would just want to give you an idea here, not to go into details, but we use classical M grid on the final levels. And then we have uh, here we have a four-level um, multi-grid. And then on the causes level, instead of this one global grid, we use uh, again this local cost grid. So here again we have k equals three, and we use this local cost grid, which can be solved in parallel. Um, again, this is equivalent to pair real if k is equal to the number of points on the causes level. So again, if all of this local cost grids goes back to the um, initial condition. And um, this kind of local cost grid can be used for any type of cycle uh, structure. So, for example, D cycle, F cycles, or nested iterations. So, um, to repeat this and to give you an idea of a clever way to distribute these residuals, um, the first step, of course, we have here our processes, we have our find grid, and the first thing is that every processor computes the residual of a point which belongs to this process on the find grid. Afterwards, we can communicate in blocks of size k, and afterwards, some processes have already all the information that they need, and some don't. But the nice thing is all of these blocks are independent of each other, so the uh, communication is done in parallel, can be done in parallel. Afterward, we have again a communication in blocks of size k, and afterwards each, each block has all, uh, or each processor has all the information that it needs. And uh, again, those blocks uh, are completely independent. So why is it working, or what is the idea behind it? Um, so the idea is that the initial condition that our problem is based on um, has to be propagated over time. And we make use of that we have an uh, iterative algorithm and we, yeah, the only initial condition comes from the left. So um, in the first iteration, the only really valid information is here. So only this four local cores could have direct access to this initial condition. And all of the other might not, might do something good, might not, uh, but that is not so important. Then when we go to the second iterations, now the um, information is propagated through the first iterations over time. So now all of these red points have from the first iteration some uh, connection to the initial condition. And uh, the number of local core scriptures have a direct connection to the initial guess increases. And when we go further, um, at some point we have uh, propagated the initial condition through the iterations over the time grid and every grid has a connection to the initial condition, to the information. Uh, let's take a look at some numerics and we start with an easy model problem where we want to um, look at some things. We start with a one d heat equation. We have some first thing to um, second order central finite difference in space, backward order in time. A 1000 times 60k space time problem. And we use here a random initial guess so that we have no benefit from some uh, initial guess. And further, we use a stopping criterion, which is based on the space time residual. Um, and we stop if it's smaller than the threshold. So the first thing that we want to do is we look at a two level ATM grid algorithm with just an F relaxation. And we fix our causing factor m to 128. And we want to look at the effect of the distance k uh, and the num required number of iterations. So here's the re required number of iteration to reach our stopping criterion. And here are different k's. And what we see here with k equals 4, we need 45 iterations. 
But if we increase k slightly, then with k equals 12, um, we achieve 16 iterations. Afterwards, this number of uh, iterations stagnates, especially also for uh, the variant, which is equivalent to perihelion. here. The last one was 128. So we're able with this method to reduce the uh, local cost grid solves per iteration by a factor of 10 for this example. The next thing that we want to look at are different causing factors. So we're again looking at two level methods, which are some F relaxation and different causing factors. And we want to see if this uh, a distance K depends on M. And then what we can see here, uh, that's why we look here at the ratio of the uh, of k divided by the number of c points. So if we have more c points, do we need a greater k for uh, for the same results? And what we can see here is that we have similar behavior. Um, I skipped the rest, but it's the same number of iterations for uh, every variant. And what we can see is that k depends on uh, m, so it depends on the number of cosquid points. And for this problem here, a ratio of uh, uh, 0 0.08 is, um, is enough to reach uh, convergence in the same number of iterations. When we're looking at the convergence of one of these cases, so again, we're looking at two level F, uh, the causing factor uh, 128, and we just look at different values of K um, we see different behavior. But the first thing is here in magenta is the uh, variant, which is equivalent to perihelion, And we see this typical behavior. So we have a nice convergence over each iteration. But when we reduce K, we see different behavior. So we have some slower convergence at the beginning. And uh, if K is smaller, then it takes longer time. And if K is a little bit bigger, then uh, we're, we're faster with this part. Afterwards, we see a drastic improvement in the convergence here at this point until, uh, well, until we reach uh, somehow the convergence of a uh, perihelion. And afterwards, we are asymptotic to this convergence. But of course, we reduce the number of uh, solves on the uh, course system. So let's take a look to a more challenging problem. And we start with a Gray Scott problem here, which is a reaction diffusion um, problem of two components. We have some feed rate, we have some removal rate, and we're looking at spatial domain um, with some periodic boundary conditions. Further, we have some time interval, and we choose some initial value which plots uh, or which uh, places some. Um, blobs in the middle and something else elsewhere. And we use a space, uh, we discretize it, use central finite difference in space and backward order in time, such that we have a 60 time, at 60K times 60K space time. And now what we are interested in is a comparison of the new ATM grid with perihelion and with M grid. And uh, we can compare those variants uh, in the way that we choose the same causing factor and uh, the same number of processes. And then uh, in general, the, the main idea is the same. So for the two level variants, we use causing, which is based on the number of processes, processes which I uh, said before, so that we get the fine level perfectly parallelized. And we use just an F relaxation for ATM grid and of course also for perihelion. And for three level, we use non-uniform causing, um, which means we have different causing factors between the fine and the intermediate level and between the intermediate and the cost level. And we use FCF relaxation here. Uh, for this experiment, we just fix our K to be half the number of points on the causes level. And we use an initial guess, which is based on nested iteration, which means we start on the causes level and then goes up performing one V cycle per level. And the ATM grid algorithm here can always, when we are at the causes level, can use this local cost grid instead of this global cost grid. And Perihelion and M grid uses this global cost grid. We use the same stopping criterion as before. 
And let's take a look at two level results at first. So here are a lot of information in this table. I will try to go slowly over it. So at first we compare per real and two level M grid. And especially we always comparing um, the variance with the same cross factor and the same number of processes. So this variant with this variant, this variant with this variant, this variant with this variant, with this variant and so on. And we're looking at the required number of iteration, the setup time, which involves the computation of this uh, of nested iterations, the solve time, and the speed. And what we can see at first when we're looking at per real, that per real benefits from a smaller time step. So the more points on the cost level, uh, per real benefits in terms of uh, the number of required iterations. And we see further that ATM grid uh, always converges in the same number of iterations uh, with the choices as per real. Further, we see the setup time again for per real. This is a full cost grid solve. And here we have this local cost grid. And what we see um, at first, we double the number of points, but we do not double the runtime. This is since we have a nonlinear solve. And the bigger the runtime, the more time is spent in each solve. Uh, we see for two level ATM grid, we have about half the runtime as for per real, since we have the number of the sequential solves on the courses level. And also for the solve time, we see that a two level ATM grid is always faster than per real. And it's especially important for that part that we have many points on the courses level so we use many processes and uh, our yeah our changes are only on the courses level so uh, as long as the fine level dominates um, the cost of the fine level dominates our um, speed up is not that big but uh, if the fine uh, if the cost level at some points dominate then we get a nice speed up compared to parallel Let's go further to three level M grid and ATM grid. And here we fix our number of processes to 256. And we choose this uh, non uniform causal stra uh, strategy, which means from the first uh, from, the, or from the fine to the intermediate level, it's 64, and afterwards, uh, 68, 4, and 2. Here we see again that, or here we see that the number of iterations for the M grid algorithm. Uh, does not depend so much on the point of the courses level. We have here one iteration less. Um, but when we're looking at ATM grid here for the first three, we uh, get convergence in the same number of iterations. And here we need one iteration more. Okay, so um, needs one iteration more, but here we uh, miss the stopping criterion slightly. So a small increase here would increase the number of iterations. Um, the setup time and the solve time since reduce the uh, work on the cost level is always smaller and we see even here if we need one iteration less we have nevertheless we have a speed up of uh, 1.24 and of course the more points on the cost level the bigger is the advantage of our algorithm. Uh, this is also this can also be seen in the strong scaling behavior so here we have the uh, runtime for time stepping on one process uh, we have the perfect scaling here in red and the uh, and two corresponding variants, ATM grid in blue and an orange M grid. And uh, unfortunately, as typical in parent time, we are far away from perfect scaling. But um, what we can see here is that ATM grid improves the strong scaling behavior since it reduces the uh, serial amount of work on the causes level. Okay, so let's go further to another example. And here we're looking at the simulation of an electrical machine, which is, uh, which is defined by a stator and a rotor. Uh, and these simulations are given by the so-called eddy current problem, which are simplification of Maxwell's equations and uh, are given in terms of the magnetic vector potential like this. We have some material behavior, uh, material properties, and the current density, which models some stranded conductors, an attached network, which provides a connection between the voltage and the so-called flux linkage, 
and an additional equation of motion uh, for the rotation of the rotor. So a complex problem, and I, uh, because of time, I cannot go into details here, but we use an existing model for this. So this is a model of a four pole square page induction machine, which was introduced here. And we use a discretization with 4,000 degrees of freedom in space and about 60K in time. Um, here we want to use two level ATM grid and 64 processes. And um, with this application, we had uh, some kind of problem. So the problem is um, if we choose per real ATM grid, M grid with just uh, 64 points on the courses level, then at some point the external solver which solves this or which simulate a time step using the Newton method uh, fails to converge at some point. So we had problems here to using um, those large time steps on the course level. And what we could do or what we did is to use subsetting on the course level. So on the course level, instead of using one big step, we use three smaller steps. And afterwards, we were fine. We use an initial guess, which is a full course grid solve, also for two level ATM grid. And we use a stopping criterion, which is based on the relative change in the joule losses. And the joule losses are one important quantity in the design process of such machines. And again, we're looking at the two level results of parallel and of two level ATM grid. And we see here that parallel requires five iterations. And this is the total time. This time we uh, added the setup and the solve time and the speed up compared to parallel and the speed up compared to a uh, time stepping for one process. And what we can see for two level ATM grid that we need here uh, 24, uh, K equals 24 to reach the same number of iterations at per, as per real. Um, and all uh, choices of K, other, all other choices um, leads to one iteration more, but nevertheless, all the runtimes are faster than that for per real, since the, yeah, the expensive costs are here on the cost level and we reduce this expensive cost. We see some speed up and um, also some speed up compared to time stepping. So let me summarize it. So we saw the new uh, ATM grid algorithm and the idea of ATM grid is to uh, change the structure of the grids on the courses level. Instead of use one global grid, we use multiple overlapping local course grids. And that, uh, these can be solved in parallel. So we reduce serial amount and enable more parallelism. We see that ATM grid consistently outperforms classical parallel M grid, and which is also nice in general. So this was really classical M grid, but all adaptions of parallel and M grid we assume could also be applied to ATM grid since we only uh, change the structure here of this uh, courses level. If you're interested, the code is online available at uh, PyMGrid, which is a Python package for the MGrid algorithm. And the preprint is also available where um, much more details are about the uh, problems. And also we'll look at the theory of this new method, which I skipped here. Thank you.